blue. All of you crappies down there, good to see you again. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Just out here on a beautiful Monday afternoon. Yes, it is afternoon. I did sleep in this morning, but we're out here today. Uh, probably honestly not gonna be out here fishing very long. Uh, obviously, as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, we're sitting on a very juicy looking brush pile. One that I fished with a customer yesterday had 20 fish, his 20 fish limit in all of about 45 minutes to an hour. So shouldn't take us that long, but I think the goal for today is going to be a catch and cook not something that i've done on the channel for a very long time i feel like probably since like not last year but probably the year before i know a lot of you guys have seen my videos before always talk about crappie tacos that's obviously one of my favorite things to do so that's probably what we're gonna do today so essentially all i really need to do is catch basically two crappies <laughs> And I feel like with the way that this tree looks here, it's probably gonna take us about like five minutes. So yeah, I think we're just gonna fish this tree for, uh, I don't know, five or 10 minutes, get our two crappies that we need for the catch and cook, maybe go scout around some other areas. We're actually fishing kind of a community area right now. The last like two or three trips, guide trips that I've had in this last week, we've been dealt with absolutely brutal west wind conditions. So it's pretty much blown out anything that I have been fishing as far as like the channel swings and stuff like that go. So as much as I hated to do it, we had to fish a lot of community community stuff this last these last couple guide trips but surprisingly enough they've actually produced some really nice fish so if you guys know what lake I fish just know that the uh, all the community crap that you'll see seven or eight ten twelve boats on does still have fish on it like I said not ideal not what I want to be fishing but uh, it's going to be pretty easy for a catch and cook today so yeah I guess let's uh I guess we're going to rig the camera up on live scope to catch a couple we'll probably catch we're going to keep two fish but we'll probably obviously catch more for the video but I don't want this to be like a 25 or 30 minute long catch and cook we're going to get the fishing portion out of the way and get back to the house and get those things fried up. So without further ado, I'm going to get the uh, GoPro rigged up, get a couple baits on, get to fishing. Get the old whooping stick out here, roll up to the spot. Let's get the second camera recording. See what things look like. We got uh, terrible wind aka no wind uh right behind the sunshine here so we're probably gonna have bad glare so sorry about that but i don't know there's really no sense in waiting but we'll get some baits down there to these fish that are some of them are outside of the brush some are tucked in the brush but we'll just kind of see uh who wants to play here initially like i said I oh oh my god i already have a fish on it's a small one but that took about 20 seconds, if that. Tucker is with me today, he's super jacked. We're gonna let him bite the little guys tangled up in the line. There you go. Not gonna be a keeper, but a good sign. Obviously there are fish on the pile as you guys saw. So I'm gonna try and readjust a little bit on this brush pile, get a little bit better set up. Look for those big ones that we saw. All right, kinda looks like those bigger ones are tucked a little bit farther back behind the tree there they go right there those are all fish on the screen those are all nice ones too kind of exactly how they were positioned yesterday on the same tree so we got the little one out of the way but now we're just trying to get like maybe a 12 and a 13 or something like that but shouldn't uh shouldn't take long here oh instant instant Nope. Oh, another one. Oh, I spooked him. Nope, he's still there. Stay with the fish. Come on. Come on. Play and keep away. Oh! Poop! Oh, another one. Coming up for it. Instant. Got him. Right as the boat's driving by. Perfect. A good keeper. We'll make that one fish taco number one. Maybe we'll do three. If they're about this size, like 11 and a half inch, or maybe we'll do three. Obviously just cooking for myself. So sweet, big ones. I should do like a challenge, even though I hate challenge videos, like fastest catch and cook because if you're coming out here to just get groceries, it's not gonna take you long. 
they're hangry. Here we go. I'm getting rocked by that boat wake coming by, so probably just have to wait a sec here. Oh, he missed it. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's still there. Can we get him? Oh, nope. Big one coming in hot. Here we go. And one, two, three, fish on, eat it. Oh my God, did not do it. Our next candidate from the school is also Leary. This is what they were doing yesterday too. Like, I mean, there's a reason why they do that because they're big and not small and stupid. Raised him up off the bottom, here we go. Got him. Got him. Another perfect eater size crappie. Again, like I told you before, um, you know, like this is kind of the same area that we've been fishing the last few days that we've been blown out by the wind. And you know, all the although these are not mega tankers like we're used to on the uh, river channel spots, which I guess we could still fish today, but for all intents and purposes. We're just looking for eaters. This, these trees over here have tons of eaters on them. So if you're looking for eaters, this is your spot. I knew it wasn't going to take us that long. Gosh, what a beautiful day. Obviously, as you guys can see, I'm rolling the chest cam today because we are fishing pretty close to just about everything. So I'm not trying to like make a huge production spectacle of my fishing and stuff. There's eater number three. That's all folks, <laughs> that's all we need to eat right there. Anyway, like I said, not trying to make like a big spectacle if other boats start showing up. So we're rolling with the chest, chest cam today, but yeah, I don't know, I got a trip tomorrow. We might start on this stuff, but I'm gonna go check the channel stuff for my own purposes after a little bit, but good to see that the trees still got a bunch on them and they are doing it. Maybe we'll try the old pitch out, pitch out to him, let it pendulum back down. Cause yeah, I mean, they're still acting like a little bit leery coming up vertically for it. So just like pitch it out. I don't, I don't really pitch it out there that far. Cause I want you guys to be able to see the baits coming through. Here they come. Fish coming up. And I got him. One feels a little bit bigger. That one actually feels a lot bigger. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice 13. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll put this guy in there and let one of those smaller ones go. There we go. Catch and cook mission accomplished. I guess whatever we do from here on out is for fun. Maybe we'll make another video. All right, well, as you guys can see, we have made it back from the lake. Beautiful afternoon out there. Uh, could not have asked for better conditions and the fish were super bitey. I did not film for the entirety of uh, my trip this afternoon. We really just wanted to get a couple fish on camera for the catch and cook. So we're back at the house now, as you guys can see, maybe not right now, but the street and the end of my driveway is kind of in shambles. The city's redoing the street as well as the end of my driveway. So things are kind of messed up. I have to store my boat out at a buddy's house. Although I think I might kind of cheat and keep that in the driveway tonight for my trip tomorrow I'm not sure but yeah anyway we've got to get these uh, three nice crappies in here to get cleaned up we've got all the ingredients we need for some delicious fish tacos so let's get those fish out of the box in here and clean them up
Oh yeah, beauty fillets. All right, well those are done. So now we're gonna transfer those from the garage to the kitchen, get them soaking in some fresh high life, and then we'll show you the rest. So we're gonna transfer those inside here. All right, welcome to the Kansas Angling Experience Kitchen. We've got our crappie prepping in a bowl right now. Nice, fresh, flaky, big, nice fillets for fish tacos. So the first thing we're gonna do with these uh, fillets here is get them soaking in some beer. Now I'm gonna use High Life. You're obviously not gonna wanna use like an IPA or anything, but pretty much obviously what the beer does. No, in all seriousness, the beer, uh, number one is obviously gonna give you some flavor to your fillets, but not that we really need any more firmness, but that beer will bring up the firmness in those fillets. So now that we've got the beer soaking with the fish fillets, we're gonna put that back in the fridge. Probably just go ahead and let that soak for like maybe 45 minutes to an hour, at least the duration that it's gonna take us to make the sauce, get the oil hot in the cast iron and all that good stuff. So yeah, if you guys have seen my previous catch and cook crappie videos, as far as the sauce goes, I like making a real simple little like three or four piece uh, sauce. So we're gonna start with sour cream, three limes, cilantro, and then I think this time we're gonna add some salsa to it, just give it some color, a little bit of uh, sweet flavor. But with the sauce, I mean, you can do like a pico, you can do some sort of like mango salsa, mango habanera. I just keep it pretty simple. It's always been the same. It has remained unchanged and still works great. It's so funny, uh, when I used to make fish tacos uh, for my girlfriend and I, back when we were still together, I'd go to the store to get stuff for fish tacos and somehow always forget like one main ingredient for the fish taco situation. This time is no exception because I forgot lettuce or cabbage or like a coleslaw mix, you know, to put in there for some greenery. So we're just gonna make do without any green stuff in our tacos tonight. Not a big deal, but that's ideal. You want some sort of like cabbage mixture or coleslaw mixture. Never fails when I try and do something nice, I always forget something. So yeah, we're just gonna get the cilantro chopped up, get the limes chopped up and squeezed into the mixture. I'll kind of just skip that part and go right now to where the sauce is finished. All right, that sauce is looking pretty good. So with this sauce, obviously, it's just like pretty much anything that you're making. You just wanna get everything to taste pretty much. So like use as much cilantro as you want, as many limes as you want, as much sour cream as you want, as long as that consistency is just kind of right about where you want it to where it's dripping like that. The one good thing about this sauce too is that if you make too much, it makes a really good dipping sauce like for chips and stuff. That's good, that's on point. It's even better with the salsa, so highly recommend adding some just regular old paste. But yeah, now we're just gonna go ahead and throw that in the fridge along with the fish, let that set up. So now I suppose we've gotta get that grease hot. Okay, well now we've got the uh, stove heating up on like medium high to high heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Crisco canola oil. You guys can use peanut oil or vegetable oil, but I've found that canola oil works the best for fish fries and stuff like this. But I will say the one nice thing about like fish tacos and stuff like this is you don't really have to make a giant mess like with your big fish fry pot or doing it outside. I've got like a smaller kind of fry daddy situation that I used to, but I really like using the cast iron. But with small portions of fish, you know, you just want to put enough oil in there to where those fish are not going to stick to the bottom of the cast iron, which I guess in this situation for that size cast iron, is an entire bottle, one and a half quarts. So we're gonna let that get hot, uh, continue to let the fish soak in the beer, take those out, cut them up, batter them up, and get them in the oil. Okay, so fish fry, I know in my other videos, I'd said I'm a big shore lunch connoisseur, but for fish tacos, I don't really prefer shore lunch as much. I really like this Louisiana Cajun crispy fish fry. Uh, this stuff is super, super good. It's got just a little bit of kick to it for your fish tacos, but it does crisp up really, really nicely. So the other good thing about doing small batches of fish like this is you can just pretty much take a Ziploc bag and just batter everything right in the Ziploc bag, not have to make a giant mess with your fingers and everything like that. We're just going right in the bag. Now for the fish. All right, so we got our fish uh, out of the fridge. 
and soaking in that delicious high life. I'm not gonna use any egg or milk or anything. We're just gonna use like the, the beer that the fish is already soaked in as far as moisture goes. But when you're keeping 12 or 13 inch crappies, you don't wanna make a fish taco with a filet like that. So what we're gonna do for this one is just cut those into like thirds pretty much. Just kind of cube them up into smaller pieces. You'd be amazed at how far two or three crappies go when you cut them into thirds like that. So let me get these cut up here. See how much meat there is in that one little tiny bowl from three crappies. That's like way more fish taco stuff than I need, but obviously I'll probably have some now, probably have some later. So let's get those in the bag, get them battered up. Grease is probably hot, so let's get to shaking. Whew, that oil got hot really fast. If you guys are not familiar with fish fries or frying anything, if your oil is smoking, it is way too hot and you're gonna burn your fish. They're gonna cook too fast, so obviously just bring that down, take it off the heat if it's smoking. I think we're okay now, but the best way to tell if your grease is hot enough is to simply take one of your battered pieces of fish. If you put it in the grease and start sizzling, it's good to go. Let's get the rest of these fish in. Well, that looks pretty good. So a couple tips on your fish fry. Number one, like I said before, make sure your oil, make sure your oil is hot enough. Number two, uh, don't crowd your fish too much in there. Like if you realize that it's full, don't put any more in, just do two batches if you need to. Number three, and most importantly, is even though you might have a lot of fish in there that look like they're bunched up, don't take a spatula or your cast iron or whatever you're using, don't shuffle that fish around. Let that fish sit in the hot grease. Make sure that it starts crisping evenly. If you start moving it around, you're gonna end up with a little bit mushier and less crispy fish. So just kind of let it hang out for the first couple minutes there, and then maybe you can move it around just to separate them. Obviously make sure none are sticking to the bottom. If they're sticking to the bottom, that means your grease is not hot enough. So yeah, just a couple things to think about when you're doing your little fish fry. But really with the size of uh, these fillets, you know, we cut them up into thirds. They really shouldn't take too long, so just keep an eye on them. When you do that little light batter, you know, with like no egg or milk or anything, and just using the moisture of the fish and the beer, you get a really light crisp, which I really like for fish tacos. It's not like I'm doing a beer batter or something that I would typically do like for a big fish fry or anything like that. But in looking at the first couple pieces here, they're just looking nice. Golden brown, just perfect. The only way you can really mess it up is that if your uh, oil is not hot enough. So we're just gonna let these go for another couple minutes here. Make sure they're nice and golden brown all the way around. Take them out, start assembling our fish tacos. Wow, does it ever smell good in here? You've got the fish fry smell. You've got that little extra beer smell too. Just beer battered, I guess. Beer soaked, beer marinated fish. Turns out so good. So we're just gonna start taking those out onto a paper plate. Put the paper towel on top. Come closer and check it out. Now that right there is just about as good as it gets for three crappies. Still super piping hot, so let's not forget to take out our sauce that's been setting up. That's obviously gonna cool things down too. So now all that's really left to do make a fresh drink and uh, start assembling our delicious, fresh caught, these fish were swimming like two hours ago, fish tacos. All right guys, well I'm not gonna bore you with any more cooking stuff or talking stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and devour a lot of this crappie here. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this far into the video. If you guys are not subscribed, definitely please make sure you subscribe, like the video, leave a comment down below. It's kind of been a struggle uh, these last two weeks here to get out some original content because I feel like a lot of it's getting repetitive, so that's why I wanted to throw this catch and cook in here. Fortunately slash unfortunately, the YouTube algorithm as it pertains to my channel is kind of leaning more towards the 
live scope crappie fishing stuff. And that's obviously where I'm gonna gravitate towards as a content creator and a full-time fishing guide doing this stuff every day. The channel is growing exponentially. We've almost hit 11,000 subscribers. Probably by the time you guys see this video, we will have hit 11,000 subscribers. So I appreciate every single one of you. But that's all I've got. Same thing as always. I have a couple, maybe three openings throughout the, la the last half of January. And then February is for the most part open if you guys want to get in on this amazing crappie bite that we've got here in Mid-South Kansas here in the wintertime. All my information is listed down below, website, phone number, email, give me a shout. But for now, I think it's time to enjoy this. So thank you guys again for sticking around for this long and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.